Today we will be doing a review of the Union Pacific 484 Northern number 844. Keep in mind, this is not the most recent model. This is the older model catalogued in 2007. Between 1937 and 1944, in a series of three classes, Union Pacific received its entire line of 45 Alco-built FEF 484 Northern locomotives. Famous for high-speed passenger service, these 844s pulled Union Pacific trains like the Overland Flyer, Portland Rose, and Challenger at speeds as high as 100 miles per hour. Displaced by the arrival of diesel locomotives in the mid-1950s, many FEF steam locomotives quickly met the cutting torch, while others were reassigned to freight service where they continued to haul loads at record speeds. One special Union Pacific Northerner still operates today, the legendary 844 FEF-3484. This engine holds the distinguished honor of being the only steamer never retired by North American Class 1 Railroad and the last steam locomotive ever built for the Union Pacific. Still used for company and public excursions, it is kept at the Union Pacific Engine House in Cheyenne, Wyoming. Lino produced two different paint schemes, black, as seen here, and a two-tone gray. Starting off with some features, this engine is equipped with legacy control system able to run in legacy control mode, train master control mode otherwise known as TMCC, or in conventional mode with the standard transformer comes equipped with Odyssey 2 speed control with their on-off switch, legacy rail sounds, and a wireless tether connection between the locomotive and the tender. We'll now start off with the exterior features of the locomotive, starting with the front of the boiler. Coming down here to the bottom, we have an opening scale coupler, which you can replace with a dummy coupler so you can lash two of the engines up or with any other locomotive. Moving up, we have your cut bar for the coupler, some stairs and handrail, and a bell at the top. Going towards the illumination parts of the boiler up front, we have two lighted number boards as well as two green lighted marker lights, a headlight with the Union Pacific 844 plate, as well as a red blinking hazard light that will turn on and blink when the locomotive starts up. Moving towards the top of the locomotive, we have your dual smokestack, as well as some separately applied piping details with your cast in rivet details as well as your hand painted separately applied whistle. Now because this is the older model this does not have the whistle steam smoke effect. Moving back a little ways we have the single sand and steam dome, uh, separately applied handrails more cast in detail, and don't forget about these also special elephant ears, separately applied hand painted pop-off valves, dynamo, as well as back here on the cab we have an opening cab roof. Moving towards the side of the locomotive we'll start down here with your front pilot trucks. We'll move up to the steam cylinders which on the 2007 which is the older model they have chrome plated steam heads. On the newer models these are painted gray instead of chrome. Moving back a little bit we have your drive gear as well as your drive wheels. Going up, we have your walkway with your perforated drainage holes, your separately applied reverser, as well as throttle linkage, along with your separately applied handrails, which also act as an antenna for legacy engines. Moving towards the rear end of the locomotive near the cab, we have your painted firebox with cast-in rivets, as well as some separately applied detail right up here. Moving down, we have your rear trailing trucks, from there, just back towards the cabways, we have nice crisp and clear 844 labelings. Above that, in the cab, we have opening cab windows with two hand-painted crew figures. Now we will be moving back towards the cab. Unfortunately, on the 844 model, the doors back here do not open. Otherwise, we would show you the inside details of the cab. Uh, but inside the cab we do have a number of separately applied details on the back head of the boiler as well as an operating cab light. Now moving on to the tender we'll start here with the front end. All this detail right here is cast in. The ladder right here on either side is separately applied with separately applied handrails. Down here we have your receiving end of the wireless tether. 
Moving towards the top of the tender, we have here on the front end some separately applied piping and separately applied handrails. We have cast in detail rivets as well as a cast in oil latch. Moving towards the back, we have opening hatches which this one has a switch for rail or signal. This far rear one has your master volume control as well as more of your cast in rivets and railing. On the FEF 3s, they were known for their 14 wheeled centipede style tenders. Now on this side shot of the tender we see nice clear and crisp Union Pacific labeling as well as your cast in rivet details. Not to forget about your separately applied handrails all up top as well as some more separately applied piping down on the bottom. Moving towards the rear of the tender, we'll start down here at the bottom. We have your large O-scale electrocoupler. On either side of the tender we have separately applied ladders, cast in rivet details as well as clear and, clear and crisp labeling. Now on the prototype this labeling would be moved down and a white reverse light would be there. On the Lionel model your reverse light is this red LED up top. On either side you also do have two red LED marker lights. Now before we start the engine up and listen to the sounds and see it run, I like to mention a few things. Up on the front of the engine, your headlight as well as your number board lights are all incandescent. The LEDs on the engine include the two green marker lights, the red blinking hazard light, and the two red marker lights on the rear of the tender. Now because this is the older model, the headlights as well as any other light on the locomotive will turn on before you start up Legacy. Because of this engine being so old and it's been through a lot of use, there are small scratches on the engine, if you did notice those, as well as the smoke unit has gone out so we are in the process of replacing that as well. Now before starting the locomotive up, I would like to point out that on the older versions of the 844, it, they, Lionel put in engine specific crew talk. Now on the newer models, they only have the generic crew talk. So now let's start this engine up and listen to some of that amazing crew talk. UP 844, do you copy? 844 here. Start her up and stand by for track orders. Roger, I'll get this train up and running. Out. Dispatch, 844 here. We're all set. Can I pull? Over. 844, you are good to go. Over. I've got green board. Train is clear to move. Out. 844, you are good to go. Over. I've got green board. Train is clear to move. Out. Dispatch, 844 here. We're all set. Can I pull? Over. 844, you are good to go. Over. I've got green board. Train is clear to move. Out. Alright, so now that we've listened to some of that amazing crew talk, we'll now listen to some fantastic engine sounds, including a great whistle in my opinion. Here's the bell. We also do have a blowdown effect. Now that we've listened to some of the engine sounds, let's take her a roller out.
Thank you for watching our review of the 2007 Lionel 844 produced by the Wichita Toy Train Club. Like us on Facebook and subscribe to us on YouTube. Thanks for watching.